catch the Wi-Fi booster. Um, I've got an additional microphone just in the corner to dead cat here. Hopefully audio is ever so slightly better. If anybody was able to join me um, with just a little quick uh, lever technique video. Um, it's for, it's for mate in Cornwall. Anyway, this is a, a little tip to get lever on the back of the sheath a little bit tidier. Um, now, if anybody was able looking at the stitching on the back of there, um, if you have a look how the stitching itself, the thread, is actually falling neatly from one hole into the other. Um, it's lying flat, um, it seems to be dressed down. That area there, those stitches, not only are the stitches lying in the ever such a slight gully, that there's a, there's a big sort of uh, division among people as to whether or not people want to remove lever um, to get the stitching to st sit lower. There are people who, want, who are quite happy to let it stay proud. But to keep it tidy, whether it's in a gully or not, which is the groove, what you have to do once you've actually pulled the stitching uh, taut, as it were, is you run over the stitching with a stitching wheel. Now you can you can use this in the gully to dress the lever down, so the actual fall of the lever uh, has got to sort of ramp up and down into each hole. The lever then sits and falls into that sort of mound furrow, but the stitching wheel will tidy up the stitching as it as it's dressed up and over the the holes and into the next one and into the next one. The stitching wheel will get that thread to lie flat. Now you have to get the right size wheel for the right size pricking iron so that your your spikes actually are the same size if that makes sense. So that is the middle size stitching I use. That's the next one down. This is those are narrower so there's more teeth per inch on this one. Uh, when I use a, a larger one, let's say I was doing a Golok sheath. So if we have a look at this pricking iron, again, this one's even larger, more space in the mat. I haven't got a stitching wheel to fit that, so what I can use is something like that, or a lolly stick. And I can actually train the stitching myself to make this on the back of the belt loop and the back of the sheath tidy and it's got a nice nap to it if that makes sense okay so that's how to keep the stitching tidier on the back and the other thing is if you notice that the if you have a belt loop that's looped over when you've got the flesh side of the lever it looks all furry and untidy all you need to do is use a slicker when you've either wetted the lever down or dyed it, if you just dyed it, it's wet as well. So you don't have to then wet it. If you've just made this all black inside, get your slicker and train the lever and tidy it up. And, so, and, you, and you can get that a lot tidier, even though it may be quite a fleshy, quite unattractive look to it. My lever that I get is very... Um, very clean on the inside so that's the inside of my lever I use GH lever and there's some there's some other stuff here they're still going but it, it, it literally was like really ragged and fluffy you you can improve that quite a lot just by having the lever wet and then using one of these slickers and you can dress that down and that's also on the, the inside of cover flaps or when you you know when you bent the back of the sheath over and done a belt loop you can you can train that over and get your lever on the back that's exposed the flesh side now you can tidy that up so that when your belt loop comes over the back you, you get the the look of it a lot more attractive um, and I say winding up now just hopefully the things work in live as it were but all slickers are not the same. I think I've got, there he is. This one is very cheap, it's quite rough. You, you want to be able to get your slicker to feel as if it's made of a highly polished wood. 
because then you can impart the polished feel to your lever on your edges or your flats. So the cheap ones that you get, you might want to work on sanding the inside of these furrows, these gullies, these shape sections here, so you get them, they're actually smoother. This one was very nice to start with, so a better wood than those. When you pick it up, there's, there's no weight to that. That's a real cheap and nasty one. This is a cheap and cheerful one. So that was better to begin with than that one ever would be if you even sanded it. But this one here, I think this is like ebony or African hardwood. Beautiful bit of kit. So if you get a really good slicker to start with, or get a piece of really good wood to begin with and do one on a lathe or something, you, you end up with a far better tool to begin with when you're doing all that dressing down and you're slicking all your edges, you know, going on your chief edges like that when you've wetted it down. All of that work is far, far better if you've got a better, harder, smoother slicker to start with. Hopefully that's helping anybody out there. Um, as I say, this is just a bit of a trial uh, live vid. Uh, hopefully the audio is a little bit better than it would be off normally of a phone um, but I'm using the phone to try and do live and hopefully it's all worked um, anybody hopefully dropped in over a live session um, I'll try and do another one at some point in the next couple of weeks um, and I'll listen back and hope oh audio is great thanks that's, that's an encouragement what I've done is I've got to use the phone cable which is different than an alt mic cable there's three isolator plastic bits in the phone the normal mic cable and sat up and perched it on the side <laughs> worth a try okay so thanks Tom for the mic it's wonderful um, and hopefully this setup works in time to come so Scott Wessex Blades out thanks to anybody who's joined live just a little tips and tricks vid for anybody doing lever work on your belt loop as it leads back tidy up the stitching and tidy up the fleshy side of the, the inside of the lever Scott Wessex Blades out thanks for joining me this will be a while saying goodbye.